What challenges do secondary teachers face nowadays? What solutions can we employ to meet these challenges effectively? My name is Michael Brand. I'm a teacher trainer and I've taught languages in secondary schools. I'd like to welcome you to Hand in Hand with Teachers, Real Challenges, Real Solutions, a series of four methodological talks aimed at providing you, the teachers, with practical solutions to some of the everyday challenges you face in the classroom. Let's talk about cooperative learning. We begin with a jigsaw. We want to be able to see the picture and read the words, so our task is to complete it. Each of us has a piece and each of us has to find the right place for our piece in order to complete the puzzle. If any one of us doesn't do our job, we can't finish it. If we do, we learn and experience success together. That's cooperative learning. A traditional education, as we know, can be rather individualistic in nature. But this is at odds with the conditions our students will find once they leave school and begin work. Whether our students become doctors or nurses, administrators or bankers, computer programmers or even, dare we say it, teachers, they will need to work in a team and we need to prepare them for this. And of all school subjects, learning a language should be particularly cooperative. The ultimate goal is to be able to negotiate meaning with other people, which brings us to cooperative learning. Let's go back to our jigsaw. Did anyone spot the picture or any of the words? Well, let's take a look. We can see the word group. Pupils work in groups, that much is clear, but it's not enough to tell our students to do this exercise in groups. Have you ever tried this in your classes? Have you ever found that the work might get done but some students contribute little or nothing. This is a common problem in the secondary classroom. The solution is a task where all of our students have to perform a role in order for it to be a success. In this way, there is not only group accountability, but individual accountability too. And here's what I do. Let's look at an example of a reading activity about the daily routine of three teenagers from different backgrounds. Reading, every student's dream. Secondary students aren't always so enthusiastic because reading is something we teachers and parents try to force on them and because it's often done sat still, in silence and alone. But it doesn't always have to be that way. Remember the jigsaw? Well, a jigsaw reading would work nicely here to keep things cooperative and fun. Here, students work in threes and the aim of the task is for all three members of the group to acquire the key points from the three texts to be able to answer some gist questions. However, they only see one text each. One student from each group comes up to the board to read the first text, then goes back to their group to retell the text to their peers. Then the other two do the same. You can hide and reveal the text using the interactive whiteboard software. Now this is an integrated skills activity, reading for speaking, and is also popular because of the element of movement. We have individual and group accountability, with each student needing to fulfil their role for the group to complete the task successfully. How often do you encounter the challenge that some of your students are great working individually, but reluctant to help and support their peers? Our solution is to try to create a climate of positive interdependence. In cooperative learning, it is in our students' interest to help each other because success is shared. If the tasks work well, we create an atmosphere of achievement in the classroom. Weaker students improve their self-esteem and the class will enjoy working cooperatively. And here's what I do. The exercise introduces the topic of unusual animals. Ever had a lesson where you give the students the first activity and some of them don't know where to start? This isn't going to do their self-esteem any good. They won't be motivated to continue with the lesson and may fall further and further behind. This is a problem for the secondary teacher. As a solution, let's use the knowledge already present in students to further their understanding. I'm going to do a cooperative brainstorm to see which animals my students already know before moving on to unusual animals. How does it work? Each student draws a target with four layers. They start off working individually. In the middle of the target, students write down all the animals they know. Then, they turn to their partner. Student A tells student B the animals they thought of and those that student B doesn't already have 
are written in the second layer and vice versa. Now the pair of students have the same words. Then they turn to another pair and read what they have and the other pair does the same. Unknown words are written in the third layer and the group of four students have the same words. Finally, each group of four reads the words to the class and any new words go down in the fourth layer. Now the overall output here, the animals the students come up with, would be the same if students put up their hands and the teachers wrote the words on the board. But here students clearly see on the target what it is they already knew and what they were able to learn through listening to their classmates. With this exercise, the students themselves see the value of cooperative learning in a very visual way and are, of course, better prepared for the activity in the course book. How do your students relate to each other in the classroom? Do they respect each other and listen to each other's views? Student-student interaction is as important as teacher-student interaction. In cooperative learning, students help, support and encourage each other, developing skills like leadership, teamwork and diplomacy. It's important to note here that students acquire these skills gradually. This is why doing one cooperative task per term has little value, because students won't become used to this way of working. For it to succeed, we need to make it an integral part of our lessons. And here's what I do. I get students teaching students. I'll give you an example. I remember when doing revision lessons before exams, I asked myself why my students weren't enthusiastic about me going over the concepts with them again. Have you ever found that? So I put students in groups and assigned each group an area of grammar or vocabulary that will come up in the exam. And within each group gave students roles. One student was responsible for an explanation, another for examples, and another for questions. I told them they could ask questions in a similar style to those they'd encountered in lessons and supported them on this, or that they could come up with their own ideas for questioning. Some were really creative here. I remember one student tested her classmates on the vocabulary in alphabetical order, in the style of her favourite quiz show on TV. Our students can really surprise us with their creativity if we just give them the chance. Those revision lessons were more successful than any I had ever done. It's small wonder, really, when you consider that people remember 20% of what they hear and 90% of what they do. And as teachers know, it's only once you can explain something that you really understand it. Remember, use group activities where all students have to work for the task to succeed. Let students experience for themselves how support from their peers helps them to learn. Finally, use this methodology regularly so your students really do acquire the skills that cooperative learning develops.